In today's video, I'm going to show you how we use mood boards as a roadmap for our shoot. And then we are going to actually bring a shoot to life with the theme of fuchsia fantasy. <laughs> Hey everybody, Lindsay Adler here, and mood boards are an important part of all of my shoots, whether I am shooting a fashion editorial, a creative play day, a commercial campaign, an advertising campaign, all of these require preparation. But what is a mood board? Fundamentally, a mood board is a collection of images that express the direction of the shoot. So in other words, if you know my style and then you see a mood board, you should be able to tell what the final shots will look like. On the mood board, there'll be references for hair and makeup, maybe what the model would look like, the lighting, uh, maybe posing, overall mood. And this can be very simple. It can be just a couple of images, even a Pinterest board, or it can be much more in depth. For example, when I am hired to shoot an advertising campaign, often we do entire creative decks, many pages, pages, a dozen pages that take you through exactly what the shoot is going to be, all of the elements. And that's because there's a lot of money on the line. What we will do is we'll have a page that gives you the overview of the wardrobe, another page for hair and makeup options, another page for the lighting. And that's how we make sure that everyone understands the direction that we're going for that shoot. Now, when it comes to a creative shoot, like an editorial for a magazine or a creative test date, there's a little bit more flexibility. And sometimes you can be a little bit more vague to give more room for creativity. So typically what I do when I am building a mood board for a shoot is I send along one, two, three, or just a few images to my creative team to show them the general vibe. So a photograph that I find inspiring. And then I ask for their feedback. So based on the inspiration for this shoot, what are you thinking for the hair? What kind of wardrobe can you pull? Any ideas for the makeup that could elevate this shot? And so it is not just me dictating the direction of the shoot, but instead I'm presenting my idea and then asking for their feedback and collaboration. So today I'm going to share with you a mood board that we have created and then we're going to bring that mood board to life. The theme of this shoot is fuchsia fantasy, and it's actually inspired by the recent Valentino runway show. Everything was bright, saturated pink, and it was gorgeous, and also it was everywhere online. It was absolutely stunning. It was pink background, pink stairs, pink makeup, pink wardrobe. It was to die for. And so I actually did a search and was looking for fuchsia fashion editorials, and I found hardly anything. So I thought this was a perfect opportunity. Now, when you're building a mood board, you can do so in a variety of ways. I already mentioned you could do Pinterest, but you can also do so in Photoshop. Just throw a couple images together in a layout. That's enough. You could drop one in a Google document, which is something I'll do sometimes during collaboration because I'll share it with my team and invite them to drop their inspiration or links as well. But probably my favorite way to create a mood board is with a free program called Canva. Canva is a website dedicated to free graphic design templates. And one of the templates it has are mood boards and photo collages. All you do is you create the free account, you upload the photos that you want, and you drag and drop them into the templates. And that is what I have done for this mood board. So let's take a look. Uh, you can see here that the concept is fuchsia fantasy. Now with the fuchsia fantasy, I have gone in and I've labeled the different references. So for example, in the top right, I liked the structure and the shape of the wardrobe there. My general inspiration was the Valentino runway show. And so you see references throughout. Uh, in the bottom left, I loved the streaks of light across the background. Now this is actually the light coming in from the sunset or light later in the day in the runway show, but I thought it would be beautiful to try to incorporate that somehow into the shoot to create a little bit of depth. Then we have the background color. I want something super saturated. For the eyes, we want something avant-garde, like pink that maybe wraps around almost like a mask. For the lips, we want fuchsia lips. And then the hair, something with a a vintage modern, like a wave from the past, but with a modern twist. Overall, the concept is tone on tone. So as you can see, as you look at this mood board, if you know my style and the skill set of my creative team, you can have a, an idea of the direction that this shoot may go, but it's really important because it helps direct everyone. I gave them a few quick references of the Valentino show, and then I got their feedback and they sent me other pieces of inspiration, which in the end led to this mood board. 
Mood boards are also important if you want to be in a magazine, if you're pitching a concept. Uh, when I work with a magazine and I'm trying to shoot for the cover or trying to shoot a celebrity, what I'll do is I'll put together several mood boards. So several of these just in Canva, rough inspiration, and I'll pass it on to the editors and ask for their feedback. And that's how we choose the direction of the shoot. Now, one of the other things I wanted to mention is you'll notice that I often name the shoot. So for example, this is Fuchsia Fantasy. It doesn't mean that it's actually the name, especially if it's going into a magazine for an editorial, but I find that titling my shoots and titling the mood board allows people to kind of go, all right, well, what would Fuchsia Fantasy be? Or if I had a shoot themed the Raven, okay, well, what would makeup be for the Raven or wardrobe? It kind of puts people into a mindset so that we're all on the same page. All right, so there is a lot going on in this mood board. So let's bring out our model and bring this to life. I am going to turn down the ambient light, turn down the house lights so that I can more clearly see my modeling lights, which is allowing me to be very precise with my lighting. As you've seen in the mood board, we are considering every piece of the equation that could go together to make this a successful image. The hair, the makeup, the wardrobe, the background. And so what I wanna do is show you what we're working with here and how we've thought and covered each of those elements. Obviously, the color fuchsia is being brought through everything. So let's actually begin with our background. The background that we we're using is Savage Universal Tulip. What I love about this background is it is a really rich pink. They have a variety of different pinks, but this one is going to give me the ability to have it appear most saturated, which of course is the concept for this shoot. Next, let's talk about that wardrobe. So we are working with some really interesting avant-garde shapes. When I am planning a shoot, one of the things I like to consider is what each team member brings to the table. So for example, if I know that there's a makeup artist who's incredible at avant-garde makeup, then maybe I'll build the concept with the idea of avant-garde makeup because I know that they will really elevate the look. And so the same thing is in practice here with the wardrobe. Some wardrobe stylists uh, really specialize in something that's a little bit more lived in or more casual. Uh, one of the strengths of my wardrobe stylist for this shot, Raytel, is that he can actually sculpt pieces around the subjects. He's amazing at layering clothing. So my model right now is wearing two different dresses. She has one fuchsia dress on and then another one that is flipped upside down on top and it's pinned in several different places, which is what's giving this voluminous shape. Now I'm thinking that as I shoot, I'll probably have Raytel pop in and we'll try different shapes. And what's really nice is there's obviously not going to be any other dress that looks just like this because we are sculpting it to our concept. Now for the makeup, the makeup is stunning and my makeup artist Yvonne is just incredible with these avant-garde looks. But one of the things that's great about her as well is that she understands what translates well to camera. So in order to have a really saturated poppy look, I often will use hard light, hard light saturate colors, and it really pops the scene. However, when you use hard light on makeup, it often washes it out. It, it kind of just overpowers the makeup, which is why the makeup is so heavy in this scene. That's going to allow me to use hard light on my subject, but still have the fuchsia going through the makeup. So what that means is that we have a fuchsia background, fuchsia wardrobe, fuchsia makeup, and it brings it all together. And then of course it comes around to the hairstyle and there's no right or wrong answer, but it's more about the vibe that you are going for. So for example, uh, if you want something to be more about interesting lines and shapes, then the hair will probably reflect interesting lines and shapes. Maybe it'll mimic the shapes in the clothing, or if everything is meant to be smooth and sleek in a dress and maybe the hair is pulled back sleek. So since in this shot, we're also playing around with interesting shapes, the hair is doing so as well. And it is immaculate. It is amazing. This is her hair and Lynn has created this beautiful sculptural element. Now we see how the mood board has come to life as we've gone down the check marks of each of the elements that we can add to this frame. But now it's my turn because so far it's been the rest of the creative team, but what can I bring to the table? All right, well, there is no right or wrong way to light this. There are truly endless variations. But one of the things I find to be really helpful about having a style, I have a unique individual voice that you see in my images. It helps to inform the way I shoot. So for example, there are photographers that shoot with light that often looks more natural. It's diffused, it's indirect, and you could shoot that look this way, but that's not what you see in my portfolio. You see bold, graphic, high contrast, saturated. And so that's what I'm going to do with my lighting. This shot is going to involve three strobes, a main light, a background light, and a fill light. 
However, I'm going to be using some specialty modifiers. So let's take a look. Our main light on the left hand side is a Profoto D2 and on that main light I have my favorite modifier. I am shooting with the Westcott optical spot, which is something I actually designed with Westcott. Now what's amazing about an optical spot is it allows you to create incredibly hard light. It also allows you to create slices of light or little tiny pockets of light. How it's built is that you have the modifier itself and then in the front of it there is a lens. This lens concentrates the light and that's what gives you such crisp defined shadow edges. It's also nice because you can project patterns onto your subject or the background, which you will see in a moment. So the optical spot we have with our main light has the kit lens. It doesn't have any gobos or shapes in it, which I'll talk about in a bit. So let's see what we're working with. All right, you can see how crisp and defined this light is. Really, really high contrast. And it's only really illuminating her face and a little bit of her torso. But obviously the whole shot is meant to be this fuchsia color and I only see it in her makeup, I don't see it anywhere else. So I have to go ahead and light the scene a little bit more. And so the next light that I wanna add is my background light. So we had the one optical spot over here and guess what? I'm adding a second one on the background. Now, there's a little bit of a difference with this one. This one is the optical spot, but we have switched out the lens. This optical spot allows you to switch and use any Canon EF mount lens, or it could be a Tamron or Sigma, whatever has an EF mount. We are also working on some other lenses, so stay tuned for that. But the one that I have on now is the Canon 24 to 70 2.8 EF. The reason that we did is it's going to give us more spill of light onto the background and more spread, more coverage. This kit lens is great for head and shoulders. It's really bright and concentrated. Whereas a wider focal length lens is going to allow us to cover the background. Another element that I mentioned about the optical spot is that it allows you to add something called a gobo, a go between optic. Basically it means a shape any shape or pattern or a texture. I can put that into the modifier and then project that shape onto the background. Now, if you'll recall in some of the Valentino runway images, you would see this beautiful texture of light on the background. That's actually my inspiration. It was evening light, it was natural light creating these slices and texture, but now we are going to emulate that in the studio. So let me turn on the second light, the background light, the optical spot with the slices in the gobo. The gobo has given us some interesting texture in the background. It's reminiscent of my inspiration and it's given a little bit of visual depth. But still, even though we have the fuchsia in the makeup and the fuchsia in the background, you can't really see the color in the dress, which is why we have to add a fill light, some sort of light filling in the shadows from the front. Now, if you've watched my tutorials, very often one of the light sources that I choose would be a large or extra large umbrella with diffusion because that lifts up the shadows. But if I want to fill in the shadows on the subject as well as the background, another technique that I like is to bounce the light off of a wall or a ceiling. The reason I do that is when you bounce it off of a wall or a ceiling, the light spreads out and it really fills in the light throughout the room. So that means it'll fill in the light on the dress as well as the background. So it'll bring in some of more of that fuchsia off the background that is currently in shadow. So right now over here on the right hand side of the frame, I have a bare bulb and it is pointed up towards the ceiling, maybe a little bit back towards the wall behind. The idea is that it's going to bounce and just spread out everywhere. So I'm gonna take a shot first with this, with no adjustments, just bare bulb. And then we're gonna see if I maybe want to add some creative modifications to this. You can see that now there's a lot more detail in the dress. You can tell that it's fuchsia and there's more light in the shadows upon the background. Now, by the way, with this technique, one of the things you really have to keep in mind is that you need to have white or neutral walls. If you have a light gray, that might work. A white wall will work. But if you have walls that are painted green or orange, all of that color is going to reflect onto your subject and it's going to change the colors in the image. So you do need to be careful with that. Now this can also work with low ceilings, but higher ceilings will give you a more even spread of light. Now I like what this looks like, but there is one variation that I wanna add into the equation. And that is, I'm going to add a magenta gel. I wanna see what it will do to the shadows. One of the things that you'll learn about shooting with gels is that gels show up most in shadow areas. Now what I see is that in the environment, my subject and the background, there are a lot of shadows to work with. So if I gel this fill light, I can now maybe have a little bit of that fuchsia or magenta even further into the frame. So now if you look at the dress and at her skin, you can see it's a little pink, it's a little fuchsia, which I think really reinforces what I was going for. And it looks like my style. 
All right, so I'm getting close to shooting, but I did want to show you a little bit of what I would do with my post processing. Not Photoshop, but my raw processing, in this case, Capture One. Now, as you can see, as I'm shooting, I am shooting tethered, which means as I take each image, they're coming into the computer. I work with Capture One to process the files. I do something called color grading. I play around with the exposure, the contrast, the color, the detail, the sharpening, all of that, so that I can visualize what the shoot is going to look like. Now, of course, this is raw, so I always can reset, but I find this really helpful because sometimes when I, I do the processing and I adjust the color, I realize that maybe I want to make a change to the light in the scene. Maybe I pop the contrast and all of a sudden the shadows look too dark. So maybe if I did that, I would need to bump up the fill light. So I find it really helpful to be able to visualize what I'm going to do in post using a raw processor like Capture One. So let's take a look at how I might adjust this image. So this is the image with zero adjustments, which by the way, already looks beautiful. And you'll notice that her skin does also already appear, appear quite pale. And the reason that it does is that hard light is overpowering, it's washing it out, which is why it's so important to have the makeup so strong. So one of the things I might do to this image would be to increase the contrast a bit in the clarity, just to pop things. And uh, it starts to make it look almost a little bit more illustrative. What's nice is that I have detail in the shadows. So if I want to drag up on the shadows and go for something that's higher key, I certainly can. Uh, but I think I want to desaturate the skin tone even more. I can see on the edges here where it becomes maybe a little yellow orange because of the hard light. So I am going to pop over to my color editor and I am going to desaturate the oranges and yellows in the frame. And then of course, I can also go into the pinks and shift the hue so I could make it more purple or I could make it a little bit more red. So I have a ton of control here. Other than that, uh, I'll just show you. This was before and this is after. I have overexposed the skin. If I think it's too strong, I can always back down on the highlights. Popping the contrast pushes the exposure at both ends. It darkens the shadows and it lightens the highlights. So sometimes you have to compensate after adding contrast. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty good out of camera. Let's see if there's anything else I want to adjust. Maybe desaturate the yellows a little. All right, so now what I'm going to do is apply this preset. So I copy and apply it so that every image that comes in has this change. And it's subtle, but it makes the results even more poppy. Now, by the way, I could saturate the colors even more, making it go almost atomic in the colors. And then I would need to come back and likely adjust the uh, reds, yellows, and oranges because I have saturated the image. All right, so I think we're ready to shoot. By the way, I'm going to be shooting with the Canon R5 and the Canon RF 24 to 105. This is usually my go-to setup when I'm in the studio because it gives me so much flexibility. When I'm working with such a high megapixel camera, I can always crop in, it gives me a little more flexibility. And the 24 to 105 gives me flexibility of focal lengths. In other words, Flexibility allows me to shoot and work quickly. We were able to capture a lot of variety of this stunning look. But as you can see, a mood board is your visual roadmap. Not only does it get everyone on the same page, so that you're all envisioning the direction of the shoot, but it gives everyone time to prepare. When you see that mood board, the hairstylist, the makeup artist, the wardrobe stylist, they can start to reach into their minds, into their imaginations, and come up with really unique ways that they can contribute to the final piece. And that's what it's all about. The best images that I create are from excellent collaboration. So if you would like to see the gear used in the making of these images, be sure to check out the links in the description below. And of course, visit Adorama.com. And if you would like to see more behind the scenes, my tips and tricks, lighting, posing, and much more, be sure to like and subscribe. See you next time, guys.